Well, again, thank you very much for having me. And, and I'm going to echo some of the comments we made before, and I'll try to stick to time. So I've got some notes in front of me, which I'll be glancing at. And I'm going to start with central control working my way down and the goods and the bads. So in terms of central control, the obvious good in terms of public health was the fact we had a nationally mandated lockdown. We couldn't have left cities, individuals and regions to come up with their own plans. But the downside has been the national lifting of that, which I personally feel was chaotic, the messaging poor, and the results will indeed cause big problems locally. So Liverpool, we've heard, will be in trouble and it never really got the fall off we got, the steep shelf that we've had in London of drops. But equally, we've now got people flooding back onto London underground, packed in like a penguin colony. And we were likely, therefore, to get a second big spike again. And I think that could have been better managed in terms of national messaging uh, and actually allowing some devolved uh, change in the way things were lifted locally. I echo the views on testing. Uh, the national process for testing paralysed the process to do it. Uh, the PCR machines that are used for testing for viral RNA were mandated and sequestered in Milton Keynes, preventing local testing when that could easily have been set up. And I certainly know of more than one facility that was set up at scale that could move that was prevented from doing so because of national control. And I think that was wrong. In terms of the NHS, good national NHS nationally controlled is excellent it's allowed us a coordinated health response and it's particularly allowed through our National Institute of Health Research a prioritized research program so we haven't had individual hospitals or people running around doing their own small projects and that's allowed us to get answers quickly um, the major trial recovery is now recruited nearly nine and a half thousand of the required 15,000 due to that national mandate and control it's allowed us to commandeer private hospitals for NHS use, and it's allowed us to create flexing inability, such as the production of the Nightingale hospitals, which fortunately, very fortunately, we have not yet needed. The bad of that NHS central control, I totally echo what we've just heard. It's been a failure of data integration. Um, by having a failure of national integration, right now when we most needed to be able to interrogate data between hospitals, trusts and regions, we've been unable to do it. And as a consequence, as an intensive care doctor, I can't tell what practice it is that might be beneficial or where I might be failing my patients. And I could do that if I only had access to those data. Uh, we should absolutely use the devolved process that we just heard described. PPE, a good thing. Central control meant that there were large amounts of central stocks and they delivered. And in the first parts of this, that was excellent. The problem was that those civilian supply lines became overwhelmed in time of war. And there was an inability or a paresis in allowing local trusts to do it themselves, um, to purchase um, autonomously rather than centrally. And there was also a paresis because um, some of the um, PPE issues, the protective equipment, actually aren't fit for practice. We don't actually need the levels of, of protection, in my view, that are mandated, and yet trusts were unable to flex uh, to deliver solutions that actually would have worked quite well. Procurement, good. Central solutions to national problems are excellent if one's got central procurement, but the problems for things like renal replacement therapy is that they're very, very slow. Whilst it allows an equitable distribution of materials, it doesn't allow speed and uh, being people being fleet of foot. So that's the central control, good and bad. The autonomous national is good. Um, that's largely been um, individuals getting together. So without central control, the nation of intensive care doctors, and that's what who are we talking about, managed to get together to share information very quickly. Every week we were having national calls of knowledge sharing as we tried to understand this strange new disease and work out how to manage it. We had international knowledge sharing, and we had a process of being able to quickly move from local to national in terms of building new equipment. Uh, I was involved with a team that got together on a Tuesday night and by Friday we had a new machine uh, developed, designed, built and passed for use inside the health service within four days. Again that was autonomous, it wasn't nationally mandated but it was nationally supported. The bad part of that sort of process is fragmentation. We now face, for instance, a problem with rehabilitation of many thousands of patients who've been through intensive care who remain gravely debilitated for a number of different reasons. This is a multi-system disease. 
but there is no central control of that at all. And whilst autonomously different people are trying to get together, um, it's a fragmented process and we're failing to deliver for the patients that we should have. And that's partly because of power, it's partly from personality, and it's partly because there is no central funding and commissioning processes take too long. So that's the central control, the autonomous national. The local, uh, the good parts of that um, means that local control allow good control. Um, it's allowed us to flex policies, for instance, in renal failure patients getting delivered to different hospitals um, without a central mandate to do it, which meant that we weren't swamped with such patients. It's allowed us to set in place immediate processes for accommodation when we suddenly found that we were having to keep our staff day and night we were able to just do things locally to mean that people could actually have at least somewhere to rest for short periods of time. The bad part of local control is that we lost research capacity, for instance. Every trust was able to deploy its research staff back to the front line, um, effectively paralysing the opportunity to deliver the research that we required at scale. If that hadn't happened, we probably would know by now what drugs actually worked and would have been able to save far more lives nationally. The same applies to oxygen supplies. Those weren't nationally controlled um, and too many machines means the oxygen pressure dropped and uh, we couldn't actually treat the number of patients potentially um, that we uh, needed to. We actually mostly got away with that. And finally, because I'm quite sure I must be coming to the end of my time, um, there are some bits about messaging I think that are worth doing. If one has ill-informed people uh, communicating internally to the ignorant and then representing things poorly, uh, the result is chaos and I will be critical of the way the messaging was delivered on Sunday night by our Prime Minister. It was muddled and it meant that people didn't know what was going on. The messages could have been delivered much better locally uh, in ways that people could understand. Uh, we've had bad messaging about PPE, we've had bad messaging about testing with swabs that could be much better done. We can come to that further if you'd like some questions. And finally uh, in terms of local and national and regional We've now got a government demanding more intensive care beds in my region, that just being London, that being delivered at scale, but in a way that isn't involving us in, as the local people delivering that. And I think we may be making some very, very bad mistakes by not engaging the local clinicians, those on the shop floor, effectively. Finally, uh, good things we can come back to. Bonfire of the red tape. Um, it could take us eight months to get ethics. We were able in the COVID crisis to get ethics through within a day. We were able to build ventilators in three days. We were to, able to release national guidance within three days of getting together to write it. And we're now back yet again to central control of that process. And the updated guidelines for care that we wrote three weeks ago still haven't been passed by NHS England for release. And um, this sort of central control does not help. It slows up dissemination of best practice. So I think I'll stop there. There were other issues I could have touched on had I time um, relating to the failure to capitalise on the opportunities related to environmental change, climate change, air quality, and the massive health dividends, oddly, that have come through this crisis and a failure to learn. Uh, we still haven't learned to integrate our data and we haven't learned how to control lockdowns effectively. And with that, I, I shall stop.